REST services for connecting IoT applications. There are two main ways to upload data to the cloud in the context of Internet of Things applications, where devices have few resources. One is to employ REST services, and two is to use special protocols like MQTT directly over TCP IP. Since the vast majority of cloud providers support REST, we will review this technology in this video. REST stands for Representational State Transfer. Basically, it is an architectural style that offers a set of services for distributed systems by employing the same protocol web browsers used to send messages between machines, HTTP. REST makes use of the HTTP verbs, or functions, to carry out actions over resources which are identified by means of a web address, URL. In this way, you can access a resource, verb get, create it, verb post, modify it, verb put, and delete it, verb delete. Note that your web browser employs get every time you access a web page. We will simulate a simple application to demonstrate REST services, in which a device uses them to send data from two hypothetical temperature and humidity sensors to a server, ideally in the cloud, but in this case hosted in your own PC. If you want to actually develop this application, you can use, for instance, an Arduino platform with a REST library like AREST, and a REST-enabled cloud platform like Google App Engine or Amazon Web Services. Before putting REST into action, we have to set up some software. We first need the REST client application to send HTTP requests. Postman is a very popular tool that makes it easy to call web services. We will use Postman to simulate the device that sends data by using REST services. Get it from the URL shown and then install it into your computer. Next, we need to install a REST server on our computer. One of the easiest to install is the JSON server, which runs over Node.js, a very popular JavaScript runtime, i.e. a program that can execute JavaScript code. We will first download and install Node.js by following the instructions found at the URL shown. After installing Node.js, we open a command prompt. In Windows, click the Start button and write CMD and type the command shown in the figure to install the JSON server. You will need super user access rights to install it. The installation should be quick. Next, create the db.json file in a suitable directory with an example of temperature and humidity data. Then switch again to the console. Go to the directory where you created the db.json file and type the command shown, json-server, space, hyphen hyphen watch db dot json. Take a look at the URLs shown under the line resources once the server loads. We will access them very soon. And that's it. Required software installed and running. Now it is time to test it. We can open a web browser and type the URLs shown under resources by json server as mentioned before to recover the data stored on the server. Now we switch to our client postman to use the server. We first use the get verb to recover all temperature data. We click on the send button and review the data in the bottom of the windows in JSON format. It is important to check the error code returned. 200 OK. If we get another code, then it means there's an error somewhere. Consult the HTTP error codes for further information. By using the POST verb, we can add a new element to any of the endpoints provided by our REST server, temperature or humidity. Let's add a new humidity entry. First, we indicate that we're going to send a POST message in JSON format by configuring the header part of the HTTP message. Then we select the BODY tab, RAW button, and write down the new humidity value in JSON format. Click the Send button and then click the error code, 201, resource created. If we now send a GET request to the humidity endpoint, we will recover the three items shown. We can also access a particular entry ID by sending a GET request to, for instance, humidity slash 3. Have you checked the error code? What happens if you try to access a resource that doesn't exist?
like Humidity Slash 100, the well-known error 404, resource not found. The verb put allows us to update any value in a rest endpoint. It works exactly like post. For instance, let's change the previous humidity value of entry 3 to 86%. Don't forget to check the error code, 200 OK, afterwards. And finally, the verb delete allows us to erase a particular entry in one endpoint. It works exactly like get. For instance, we can delete the entry we have just added and then try to get it. We hope this video has helped you understand basic REST services, which are widely used in the development of IoT applications.